Hello everyone, this is King and welcome back to my video. Today we'll be doing a speculation video. So this video is based on supply drops. So this is a video speculation on how to farm supply drops and how to force spawn supply drops. So the purpose of this video is to be able to finish the collectopedia and my understanding is in order to find a collectible item in the shape of a bag that is only found within that specific specified region and can only be found in supply drops so now we need to be able to reliably farm supply drops so we are in or I'm in the process of trying to figure out what the I don't know how do you say that formula is for a supply drop to spawn so there's a few things that I do know there's a few things that I don't know there's a few things that I'm speculating and there's a few things I want to test so we're gonna go over all that pretty quickly once I'm done talking with this video I'm going to carry out that action and then as soon as I come with this as soon as I see a supply drop I'll record the video see what drops from it show you guys and just continue doing that until I have like maybe what five total supply drops accumulated within the, the, the presets right and if the presets doesn't work I'll also do a video saying hey this isn't it or hey this is wrong so we'll go from slowly progress until we find the right answer now my goal is to have everyone collaborate in this let me know what you think I'm going to tell you what my test runs, uh, I don't know how to say it, but criteria, I don't know, my, my variables, my controlled variables and my uncontrolled variables. That way you can retest the hypothesis and see if you're getting the same results or not, right? We're going to the science lab folks, we're being scientific, <laughs> let's put our coats on, get together. All right, I, I digress, okay. So what I understand is from my speculation is there is an X number of preset locations a supply drop can spawn in, in each region. So that means like, let's say a supply drops can spawn in a total of 27 specific locations and they're all scattered out throughout the region. Like for example, the ATA region may have three locations where a supply drops will spawn always spawn right it, it, if it's going to spawn in this location it'll always be at here XYZ there um, let me see if I can show you here so if I go on the map here this is the ATA region to my knowledge I only know of two locations for a supply drop one is right here which is just northwest of the Torchling Hills or just south of the Battlescar Ferranis so it's literally right here, which is one supply drop will spawn. Another one is here in the Cooley Lake. So you get that from going from the upper ATA region into the full. And then once you head down there, you head all the way to here. There can be a supply drop right here as well. I don't think I know any other place here in the ATA region. I know a few others, but I don't want to move my map because it can show potential spoilers when I show you the, the full map. So that's why I'm trying to, that's why I have it, you know, hot keyed here as a shortcut to save spoilers because I don't want to spoil you folks. Now, uh, back to, back to my speculation, <laughs> only one supply drop can spawn at each time. I have a feeling multiple can, but I have to, I have to be, you know, matter of fact, right? I have to choose something. I can't be wishy-washy. So I'm going to say only one supply drop spawn at a time because if there were multiple, I wasn't paying attention, so I can't say yes or no to this. So I have to say something. So I'm going to say only one supply drop spawn at a time. It chooses an X number of preset location as a drop, meaning it can, if it's 27 different locations it can drop in, it will choose one of the 27 and, and it'll just spawn there only. So my other theory speculation is you have to go within X proximity for it to spawn. So you have to go within the area for it to spawn, within an X area radius for the supply drop to, to trigger. Like for example, if it was, if it chose location one out of 27 
and you go within 50 yards of location one, it will do the ba -doom. Oh, look, it's a supp supply drop. That's my theory. Let's go. Um, if it spawns in a region, it will not spawn in the same region again. So, for example, if you have a supply drop drop in the A tier region, and there's five different locations that can spawn in the A tier region, it will not respawn in that region. It'll go to a different region. For example, if the a Fornus region has six different potential spawn points, it'll go to that location or any of the other regions. It'll go there. So if you have one in the A tier region, you have to go to a different region and go look again. Um, the another speculation is it must be outdoors. So it cannot be any place that is indoors, um, inside a building or a cave or anything like that. It's always going to be outdoors. Uh, another speculation is that... Hmm. Do I have anything to say further than that? I feel like I have one more thing to say. It's always on the tip of my tongue, but I'm, I'm going to leave it for the sake of the video. So I'm going to tell you how I'm going to test this theory. Okay, I'm, I'm going to show you how I'm going to run my my test here's a few criteria of what i can and cannot do what i will will not do so one um i will not collect materials uh the reason being in when i did this test run i did five i i, I attempted to spawn supply drops and i was able to get five to spawn back to back so it was it was reliable to the sense that it was the most supply drops i ever had spawn consecutively but I don't know exactly what I did to make it spawn. So I'm going to, like at the time, um, in some points I lingered. Some points it spawned instantaneously. Other points I was just collecting collectibles and it just spawned. So I don't know, is it because it's time-based? You know, I'll get to that in a, in a minute. But, so what I'm going to do is, I'm not going to do, I'm not going to collect any materials off the overworld. So I'm going to try to avoid all the collectibles as possible. The... I'm only going to travel from landmark to landmark and then once I'm done with in that in a specific region so I'm going to stay in maybe the AT region and go from each landmark to the like go from top to bottom landmark to landmark and once I'm done with that I'm going to go back to the top go from each rest spot to rest spot I will not be traveling to any tombstones so I will not fast travel to a tombstone because I don't know if fast traveling to a tombstone won't trigger anything so I just want to leave that alone I don't know if that makes any sense or not, but I'm just going to leave that variable out. Okay, so we're going to do just landmarks and rest part because those are official fast travel points, right? If anything, you can argue that landmarks are the official fast travel points, not rest spots either. So, you know, it's it's a bit, it's a bit on the line there, but we're going to ignore it. I'm not going to leave a region until each landmark and rest area has been traveled to. So, this will solve the theory of you have to travel from one region back to another region and then back to another region for it to spawn so it's based on region jumping so if we if in order for us to figure out if it's a proximity issue versus a region jumping issue we have to travel to each region first to cover the map and then go to the next region so if it if it's the point like we go to the a2 region we go to all the landmarks all the rest spots and then we go to the condensia region and then we go back to the AT region and it suddenly spawns in the AT region we now know it's a it's not a, a proximity issue it's a um, region issue so you need to travel from region to region for it ha for for their chance for there to be a chance for it to spawn right so that's how we're gonna solve that by doing that theory here I think the next thing is um hmm uh, I'm not going to explore, so do not do not linger or explore unless it's to get in closer proximity to a known spawn. Meaning, if I'm going to go to a landmark and spawn there, I'm not going to go traveling and exploring because this what will this what this is going to prevent is the time based, right? So, is it based on the time? Is it based on collecting materials? That way, if we're just spawning at a um, landmark or rest area. That can cover the proximity theory, right? So that's that's gonna that's gonna take away the the theory that you know it's based on time because that's no longer gonna be true if it cons if it consistently spawns as we as we just hit the landmark and it just spawns, right? 
or if we don't collect anything at all and it spawns that means it has nothing to do with collectibles and then I'll go down the, the region so let me just my questions I have for it I think I should have said this first but my questions that I have for it is like is it proximity based does it spawn does the spawn affect is it affected by proximity um, is it affected by fast traveling from landmark slash red spots versus tombstones does it really matter because they're not really official so is there a specific thing we cannot fast travel to for it to not trigger um, let's see is it is it region based on region hopping is it based on proximity oh, that was a question let's see does moving regions also affect spawn that was something I already said do collecting collectibles affect spawn? Something I already said. Is it time based? Something I already went over. Can there be multiple spawns? I picked that there can only be one. So that's something we have to figure out. Let's see. Something that I have confirmed is supply drops. When a supply drop spawns, it will not despawn until you unlock it. For example, if there is a supply drop that spawns in the A tier region, you see it. It shows you. It's, the animation goes. Oh, look, a supply drop. And you go to a different region and do your own thing and you come back it's gonna still be there right it won't go away until you go there and open up the chest that's why I feel like there can only be one right that's my that's my theory so that's what I'm gonna do folks hopefully that's um, makes sense to you let me know what you think let me know what information you know I'm going to put in the description all the locations of my known supply drops that I know for a fact spawns supply drops I think I know like five or six at the moment. So if you guys know any other known supply drop locations, we can add it up to the list. That way we can have the full list. So we can, you know, maybe just fast travel to each location. Right now I'm just going, I'm, I'm combing the area because I don't know all of the, the specific spawn points. I only know some, so I can't travel from, instead of traveling from, once we know all the spawn points, instead of traveling from landmark to landmark, we can travel from, spawn location to spawn location that way we can solve the proximity issue and it can be like instead of traveling all over the place you can just travel to instead of 50 landmarks you only have to travel to 27 it's going to save us a lot of time also let me know what you found out what you noticed if you know anything i'm going to also make a video of me opening chest to see to just to prove to you folks that you know these collectibles that have the back icons are specific to supply drops only with the rare case of it being in some chests so hopefully that was helpful and informative folks let me know what you think and what other xenoblade videos you would like to see that's gonna be it for me today make sure you follow me for other xenoblade 3 content i do post daily and i'll see you all in the next one